Namaste. Our new look takes a bit of a turn today as Sadhana, the inward path, explores the twists and twirls of an ancient Hindu classical dance form through a documentary dedicated to Kathak. The dramatic entrances, breathtaking footwork, graceful and exquisite expressions all capture the beauty of Kathak. In our special today, we take an in-depth look at this dance noted for its beat in time. In today's time, changing and adapting, yet in many ways the same. Enjoy Kathak, indeed a dance for all time. Kathak is a very natural form of dance. It's very near to our everyday life. Any form of art comes from the people and when it becomes more stylized, then the scriptures come. The dance comes first and then the scriptures. Katha kahe so kathak. One who tells a story is a storyteller or that which tells stories is kathak. These kathakas or storytellers uh, started uh, performing in the temple and then they moved from you know uh, town to town it developed uh, later into a more stylized form all our dance forms are about love about that uh, ecstasy and about that spiritual love, unison. You have to listen to your inner conscience, your, your inner urge, voice. originally is a form of physical expression, expression of joy. You know, the early human beings, they danced in joy, they danced to please the gods, they danced when it rained, they danced in fear when there was a flood. Everything uh, they wanted to connect through the movements, through the body. And that is what is dance. And then rhythm has always been there. Um, its history is, is very exciting because it, um, it went from temples into, uh, if you look at the history of India and the influence of the Mughals and different conquerors. So it had an, inf uh, uh, an impact on the dance form. Day by day, we, uh, the experiment is going on there. Every art form has to have a large view, large, it says depend on the artist, you know. But we will not go out of beyond the, our classical formism because classicism is we will not go out. We will follow the system. It was a style that was uh, formed casually, in, in a sense casually, not really serious, but um, it developed because you would get the tabla player playing. It's a very spontaneous style. So we connected rhythm and movement and then someone made a sound, a nice sound that seemed good to hear. That became melody. So that's how dance came into being. The, the items that make up a repertoire today very beautifully reflect the journey of dance from temples right up to Brazilian stage today. Uh, 
Um, cuts are like the other classical forms, are divided into three aspects loosely, nritta, nritya, and natya. So nritta basically refers to the technical aspect, which is pure dance, dance syllables. Um, I won't want to say they don't have meaning, they have meaning to a dancer, but not wordly. In other words, the words technically don't mean anything, but it's an understanding that the dancer has with the musician. Uh, the, the classical balls, the, the, the hand gestures, where you place your hand, um, the eye movements, um, um, the combination of those movements with a tabla movement, uh, rhythms. And um, like I said, it's technical, it's pure technical. It's just um, fancy footwork and, and, and twirls and, and um, mastery of a dance over speed and, and uh, precision at the same time. Far removed from India and our roots, I think dance has played an important role where we've kept in touch with our uh, cultural roots as well as spiritual roots. Um, like I said, it, it began with the temple form, so it was um, taking stories from our scripture. So this way we've kept in touch with scripture, we've kept our link with the Lord, which is classical dance is heavily based on that. And today, even though we're so far removed for so many years, I think we, we're still proudly Indian. And because of dance, because of language, because of music, um, we've kept on to this. And this is, of course, the efforts of our great gurus who have chosen to take all of this out of India and, and spread it uh, outside of, of India. Guru was not just a normal teacher. You left home, you left everything to go and live with a guru and serve him. And thereby he passed on this knowledge to you. So that, that um, guru-shishya relationship is something so special, like I said, it's unlike a normal teacher or a student. I think that's the most treasured um, relationship you know, in your life, besides all other relationships with your parents and God. You know. um, thereafter comes your guru, you know. And uh, I think uh, if you learn as a student of dance, uh, or even studies in your studies, if you can, I wouldn't say worship your guru, but respect your guru and uh, uh, you know, there comes a lot thereafter because that's your starting point. If you can learn respect, show respect, have discipline. And I always say this discipline is not only for the dance, it takes you throughout life, you know. There are two aspects in any classical dance form. One is the technical aspect and one is the expressional aspect. And uh, when you talk about the expressional as aspect, you talk about the moods, the feelings, which, which is inherent in every human being. And when you talk about the technique, it's about coordination and understanding your own body and understanding the potential of your various parts of your body. We have a library of movements, of various movements we have uh, for the pure dance and we have the rhythm patterns. So we learn how to use the movements to create beautiful patterns. Chakkar, pirouettes are a very important part of Kathak and the footwork. Kathak have a lot of footwork, the rhythmic patterns, which is unique, but also in other form also, but Kathak, we, we use more.
the, uh, the rhythm is one, two, three, four. This is the tempo. The will go one to the four, one to the four, one to the four, one to the four. As the English is the We'll do it by footwork also, this, the same speed. When they play anything, the Kathak dancer must be able to execute the same sounds that they hear, you know, and, and that they do that via the foot. So the foot is the most important, you know, uh, uh, part that we use, strongest and most um, uh, emphasis is placed on that footwork. So any ball, whether, um, you know, it'll say like, uh, uh, so now we have to ex bring out that big daddy big tail with the foot. Then you get Nritya, which is now Abhinaya starts coming in. So um, the expressional form of dance, um, facial movements, um, hand gestures, mudras, um, eye movements, neck movements, and each of these are used differently in the combination to express something or bring something out. Expression with eyes plays an important part in our dance style because we convey a lot with the eyes. If the hands are simple, but the eyes tell it all. The gungurus are, are like going to school with a pen. You need the gunguru for Kathak dance. And that's our most important um, uh, belonging as a dancer. We should have to have our bells more than other styles is in Kathak. And uh, most dancers adorn about 100, a minimum of 100 on each foot, which is a couple kgs in weight. So you have to master the art of carrying this weight on your foot and bringing out the sound of the, uh, each gunguru, each uh, bell. And uh, that, that art is an art itself now, mastering that. <laughs> Feeling is there, you know. So I, we also try to keep it uh, feeling in such a today's way. So we'll try to use in soft ways the power, the, the uh, air. But you can't see air, but you can feel air. So this is the feeling, and we will utilize the choreography through these all aspects, like tree. You can see tree, but when trees flowing, then air is moving and we feel that trees moving, like rain is coming. So we are sweating and everywhere is rain, like river is, is there. So we can take something like nature also, bur fish, bird, these all, there are many things to convey very easy without any language barrier. <laughs> ultimate aim of any performing art is to evoke rasa. Rasa is the state of aesthetic delight in the audience, not in the dancer, in the audience. The dancer can be portraying a, a very sad scene. Someone is dying on the stage. 
but the audience goes through karun rasa karun is pathos and rasa is a state of being in delight so when i am able to create that karuna well on stage i should be able to touch your heart and make you elevated to a very higher spiritual state of being Kathak um, is definitely a medium for the dancer to connect with his audience. There's a beautiful connection between the dancer and the musician because as the dancer starts unfolding the story and the mood and the gestures and the emotions, similarly the musicians use their instruments to enhance the mood, enhance the storyline. There's a lot of bhava, a lot of emotions involved in this evening's performance. This has been a really a very spiritual and enlightening journey for us, and uh, a very long um, practice time that has uh, been involved in uh, preparing for this evening's function. Close to two or three months of rehearsals, rigorous rehearsals, getting it to the point where um, a, ref a refined point where there's no. hardly any mistakes and trying to reach that perfection which we believe is god i often say when you stand on stage time stands still um you go into another um a state of being so when you start something like that it can only go higher your your um your vibrations change the 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 interplay of music and and um uh, sur and tal and um the words of the uh, that that are recited combine and take you to another level so that spiritual aspect or devotional aspect cannot be separate from indian dance it's not possible it's the spine it's the soul for classical dance this the rules are very very strict very fine and the boundaries are very firm so you have to learn you have to uh, learn the rules and then you learn it so well then you can break the rules going to present um uh mythology any stories about mythology so we'll use uh, like uh, for girls uh, lenga or uh, we call choli or blouse and of course we use cover the dupattas also for females for gents we use dhoti and which which is called bandi you can see in the uh, kishangadi many miniature paintings that they sell there and for gents the uh, dupatta is here and if we'll do some without uh, any mythology so we'll use uh, long uh, kurtas and churidar pajamas
key is to remember what is the essence of my dance what am i trying to say and it's the guru's role to constantly remind the student if i learn to touch your the chord of your feelings then you will always be touched no matter whether you are a computer scientist or you are a pilot or you are a farmer i have to learn that art <laughs> classical art form uh, the roots are so strong and um, it can just keep on innovating and experimenting with the newer world the newer technology when you collaborate you have to keep in mind that the due respect and the due space should be given to all the forms so my intention was that my medium kathak should not be so loud to spoil the mood of the baul singing all connect with dance with music with melody with rhythm with poetry find some time in the day all of us to reflect on ourselves and reflect on music and dance it's uh, eternal i would say it can just go on and on and on and we have been i have been practicing this form i i, I was 7 and now you know at my age i still have to explore so many things so it's just wonderful <laughs>